Good time zone kiddos, it's Frosta here. Welcome to Cherry Creek Ranch, home of Haven Hollow, a refuge for lost, forgotten, or injured creatures of the world. Like my furry friend here, Blossom. I am an astral dragon VTuber with an affinity for cherry blossoms and anything small and cute. These videos are currently my VODs from Twitch, which you can catch me streaming evenings sporadically when I'm able to. I hope you enjoy the video. going I'm glad that they like it I'm kind of still at the beginning of it I dropped it for a little bit playing other games but I decided to come back to it welcome in I appreciate you being here Hey Frosty, how's the night so far? It's calm, as usual. I've got a slight problem though. Huh? What happened? My supplier had some logistical errors. I don't have my ingredients today. Ooh. Man, that's a bummer. Don't worry. I still serve the caffeine you desperately need. That's good to hear. Anyway. Let me set things up first. You're our first customer after all. Don't worry, take your time. I'm a writer, not an editor. So, I'm used to taking things slow. <laughs> Writer's block again? You got that right. What are you writing now? Do you remember my claim to you? Ah, pardon the interruption. The machine is ready. Do you want your triple shot espresso now? Yes, please. And if you forget how to make it, just check your phone, okay? Anyway, I really need that triple shot of espresso. Which is just coffee. Three times. If I am not mistaken. Yeah. It's just espresso, espresso is... Coffee, coffee, coffee. Serve it. One cup of triple shot espresso. Special for my only customer tonight. I don't really like coffee, but geez. Geez, oh, geez. This game makes me want some. Anyway, where were we? We plan to do something. Yes, that. It's not that I hate writing stories for the most people you know, but it seems like the right time for something bigger. So, a novel? Yes. It sounded so simple and I was making. Oop. I just want you off the screen. There we go. At least you still have your job. In case things go awry. <laughs> 
she quit, didn't she? Did I say something? No. You're right. I said something I should have thought about myself. No, she quit her job. You know who owns the Evening Whispers? GRA Media, right? Yes. They are the biggest book publisher in the country. So when an opportunity presented itself, I took it. What do you mean by opportunity? Well, I bumped into one of the big guys in the elevator. So naturally, I pitched my book idea. Uh oh. Am I further back in the night? Come on, don't look at me like that. Are you for real? Yeah, yeah, I know. Just do the thing. Hold up. What day am I on? Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. For some reason, it sounded like I've had this conversation before. Yeah, yeah, I know. Such a stupid thing to do. So, how did they react? Thankfully, he's seen my short story, so he challenged me. If I can get a draft ready in a month. He'll pull some string up. This definitely does feel like. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's the. I'm like, this doesn't seem right. I could have sworn. I thought it was kind of weird that we lost all of our stuff, like, in the middle of everything. Research found that most furious additive on the market are not safe. Morris Lester from Slum to Glam, pajama clad 27-year-old actuary, found decapitated on his own bed. Do you want to order anything else? I'm good for now. I'll order again once I finish reading this. Okay then. I'll leave you with whatever that is. Mm. Oh man. Hey, it's Aqua. Oh, Aqua, fancy seeing you again so soon. Hi, Freddy. Hi, Forrest. Good evening, Ms. Aqua. How are you two today? Same old. I'm good. How about you? <clears throat> I'm fine. Thank you. Oops. I asked that already. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. Is Myrtle here? So far, it's only me and Frosty. We have you with us now, of course. We need her here, do we? No, it's not that. I just wonder who she's going here again tonight. Over email, right? Who uses email to try and get somebody to show up? Why don't you just tell her to come? Who uses email as a, hey, come meet me at the tea shop? Always works for me whenever I want to talk to someone. It's the middle of the night. It's not that important anyway. I just wanted to follow up on the question your team sent today. Follow up directly, I mean. Anyway, I should order something. Take your time, Miss Aqua. It's alright, I'll order now. I'll have a cup of tea with lemon and cinnamon. Alright, so. Specifically, tea.
Russian tea. Yep. Despite the name, it's totally American drink. Yeah. Oh. Ah, here we go. A mermaid from Atlantis and a friendly introvert tea lover. Video games and general grandma. Move to Seattle to achieve her dream of advancing technology as far as we can. Trying to find the place and person where I'm doing something I love. Which Myrtle is just a generic game developer. Is originally from a community called something like that. Oh, that's highly specific for the fact to know. I guess I spend too much time browsing the internet. Thank you, Ruby. I've been here since you left last night. I'm shrinking first. You said you haven't left. Whoa. I was just joking. Um, I'm going to turn the game volume down just a little bit. Because... It looks like it might be overpowering me. So we're just going to turn down a touch. See how that looks. Mm. Turn up my gain a little bit, possibly. See if that helps out a bit. <sighs> okay. Turning the gain down a bit more. There we go. Because I don't want it to be drowning me out completely. I also want you all to be able to hear it. Well, it's music, but it's music more or less. There we go. I was joking. Oh, that would be crazy. Bye. Oh no. I don't mean to offend you or anything. It's just that you shouldn't forget to take breaks. You too, Frosty. Please make sure you get enough rest. Of course I will, Miss Aqua. Thank you for the reminder. By the way, Aqua. Yes. Where do you come from? Because, judging from your accent, you're not from the States, right? I'm not. I'm from the ocean. So, you're a full-fledged oceanic? A scenic? Born and raised in the sea? Why did you move here? Chasing the American dream, I guess. You moved with your family? No. I'm the only one who could move here. Oh. Now I know why. It's not easy for our people, especially the females, to get a higher education. I got scholarships and the opportunity. I wasn't sure about moving, you know, but my parents pushed me to do it. How long have you been here? Almost two years now. Do your parents visit often? They can't. Do you know how hard it is to for people to get a U.S. visa. I'm oh, sorry to hear that. It's okay. We're still in contact. We do a video call at least once a week. Do you have siblings? Of course. We are C people. My extended family is probably as big as Seattle's population. That's a lot. Really have that many relatives? Of course not. I was just exaggerating. But if you count my grandpa's kids and grandkids, there are hundreds of us. Holy. How about you, Freya? Do you have any siblings? I have. Not as many as you, I assume. <laughs> I have a little brother, four years younger. He also lives in Seattle? No. He's living in San Francisco, near our parents' house. He's a good kid, and I'm the rebel. Working on working some high-end tech job. While taking care of my dad on the weekends. So nice of him. I know, right? That reminds me. I should visit my parents after finishing this draft. You should. Visit them all you can. I know. Anyway. I want to order something. 
Hello, espresso. You know, the usual. You, sir. Ah, yes. Hmm. I don't know what to order. Something to raise your spirits, perhaps? Hmm. 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 I can make you a custom drink if you like. Actually, STMJ. I'm sorry, I've never heard of it. If you can tell me the ingredients, I'm sure I can recreate it. Ah, lucky me. Susu Telo Madu. Ah, yeah. It's Indonesian. Milk, egg, honey, and ginger. Milk, egg, Honey, ginger. Okay, so milk, egg, honey, ginger. Hold up. That doesn't seem right. Ginger honey. Try this again. Milk. Ginger honey. Just to see if the Okay, so the order in which they're added, it does matter. I did not know that. Oh, he's got it. He's got a little tiny phone. Very difficult to find a place with proper STMG here in the United States. I've traveled so many places. None of them got it right. You're the first one to manage it. Excuse me, may I ask you girls something? Sure, ask what. What kind of things do you guys like doing nowadays? Excuse me? Aren't you college students? Um, no, we're not. Ooh. I ask him. Sir. Hmm. You're being creepy, old man. Hmm. Go back to your chair and keep. Oh. Oh. oh, I'm sorry. I mean to be creepy. No, so just want to. No idea. It's trying to flirt with. Hi, Wob. How's it going? The old man's trying to flirt with us. Where? Meet him? Yes, but not so loud. This man here is Rachel's diet friend. He has to meet me. I told him to come here. Oh. I didn't know that Rachel's dad was perfect old man. No wonder she ran away from home. 
Everyone, please meet Mr. F Furlong, Rachel's dad. Mr. Furlong, please meet Freya and Basta. Please call me Hendre. Hendre. Oh, that's really, I wasn't trying anything funny. Sorry about that. Wait a minute. Your name is Hendry Furlong. Yes. Pure Rachel. Florentia's father. Yes. Furlong, Florentia. Why do you have different last names? Florentia was my late wife's maiden name. Oh. I'm sorry. Richard shows it for her stage name. Freya. Okay, I think I better work on my novel. You guys have a lot to talk about. Freya, I'll come with you. Anyway, what was it that you wanted to talk to me about? It's about Rachel. The night when you drove her home. She was hanging out with shady people. I think one of them was a bit shady. Hey, I heard that. But I'm not a criminal. I'm just kidding. She was in this coffee shop talking with Freya of Rasta here. She wasn't in any danger. Are you sure? What about before that? Whoa, calm down. Everything all right? <sighs> it's just that I feel like she's getting more and more distant. I don't know how to talk to her anymore. Or even what to talk about. I don't know what kids her age are into nowadays. Every time we talk, we end up fighting. I have three daughters. We fight all the time. One thing that I learned. Give them time and space. But be there when they need you. Or you can just bribe them. One time I had a fight with my oldest daughter. She didn't want to talk to me for a week. I know she loves pizza, so I went to Rocco's and bought her favorite pie. I left the pizza on the table like a trap. Just waited for her to take the bait. It was like a stakeout. When she took a bite with the delicious pepperoni, I casually grabbed the slice and sat with her. Pizza really helped smooth things over. After that, she wouldn't stop talking. What if... What she loves doing is the problem. Rachel loves singing and performing on stage. I'm proud of what she has achieved with her career. She's really young. But the entertainment industry isn't a kind place. Not the label, not the media, not the fans. And I don't trust her new manager. Rachel's just a little girl. What if she gets harassed or forced to do drugs? Did something happen? Well, nothing's happened yet. I just feel it in my guts. Is it possible you're just being paranoid? I don't know. Maybe. Rasta, I need to go now. Thanks for the drink. Take care on your way. Milk based, okay. Interesting. Warm booster made of susu milk, tealer egg, madu honey, and jahi chinchur from Indonesia. Interesting. Here she is. Can't you just find another manager? Rachel's already 18. So legally she can sign contracts without parental approval. I've been trying to tell her to quit. Every time I brought it up. We just ended up fighting. Well, yeah. It's her career. As a parent, there's really nothing much we can do. Other than guiding them and being there when they need us. Sooner or later, we'll have to trust them to make their own decisions. And with everything we've taught them, 
hopefully we'll make the right choices what if she made the wrong choices i can do a background check on the manager if that will ease your mind please do okay give me a name it's morris last name lester morris lester got it oh isn't he the guy in today's paper anyway i'll let you know if there's a hit hold on i gotta take this just got a call i've got to go i'd love to talk more about this with you let's meet again soon wait you have my contact details call me if you ever need my help wait Oh, you can't actually see my mouse. Cool. Good. <clears throat> Don't worry, I'm sure everything will be alright. I used to manage a girl band. I've seen bad things happen. Not bad? Yeah. I was against her joining that pop group at first. But my wife, Rachel's mom, she convinced me to give it a chance. Ever since she's been gone, I don't know how to talk to Rachel. With her wanting to do more of her own stuff, I don't know what to do. What do you mean by her own stuff? Modeling and solo singing career. It's a whole different world than the band. I'm familiar with that side of the biz. But things have changed, right? Even if it has, I don't think it's for the better. She survived being an idol, even managed to graduate and start a solo career. She sounds like someone who can take care of herself, don't you think so? She's not ready. Don't want her to get hurt. There's a lot of bad people out there. The sentiment, like, I get it. But she's technically an adult. People that want to take advantage of her. I completely understand the sentiment because it's a highly volatile space. You are her father. I understand you might be worried. However, you shouldn't hinder her from achieving her dreams. You just want best for her. Is it really what's best, though? I think she's born to soar. But she's just a girl. My little girl, seriously. That's your argument? You mean to sound that way? It doesn't matter whether she's a boy or a girl. You'll drive her away if you keep acting like this. With your knowledge, you should be able to help her achieve her dreams. I was once a stubborn girl, too. Maybe I can give you a little advice on how to handle rebellious teens. I, I'd love to hear it. Is it okay if I stay a little longer? Take all the time you need. Black magic. Sweet, cool, and magically wakes you up. So, looks like coffee, honey, and mint. If I if it wasn't for the bitterness of coffee, that would sound amazing. Military personnel stationed along the East Coast to prevent immigrants flooding in from the Atlantic. Werewolf representatives push the ministry for more accessible sedative. Doctor from Salak Town arrested for experimenting with child cloning. Are you sure it would be okay? 
Yes. I mean, it'd be really hard to pull off. But it's something that'll make the story different. Different isn't always good. It's a neat concept, but you need to handle it carefully. And gracefully. I know. Who we got today? Hey. Scala. Good evening, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Gala. Am I interrupting? Looked like you were having an intense discussion. It's nothing. Ross is just giving me feedback. For the book I'm writing. Sounds like a heavy discussion. What are you up to tonight? Just planning to sit and relax. Please don't let my presence interrupt you. No, don't worry about it. Although, I need to interrupt Ross and Herman. Sure. How can I help you? Can I have a cup of... Hmm. You remember my remedy. Um... Okay. Of course. I want to take it which way. Last order didn't quite hit the spot. Remember, it's tea and ginger. The last thing is definitely a different ingredient from either of those. Alright, so. Tea. Milk. Gala hat. Oh, that's adorable. As you from the smell, this looks like it. Indeed. I have the same feeling. I've made a note of that mixture. Perfect. Anyway, please don't mind me. I continue with your discussion. Don't worry, Mr. Gala. We're done for the night. You're done. I have a lot of new homework thanks to you. You're welcome. Is Hyde coming? No, I'm by myself tonight. It's going to be a peaceful night then. That's me and Freya. Oh, come on. I was just joking. He needs to learn how to communicate his thoughts nicely though. He might not look like it, but he's a very kind person, you know. It doesn't show it, that's for sure. That applies to you as well. Oh, come on. Alright, who this? Oh, it's... Bailey's. Okay, good evening, everyone. Welcome, Mr. Bailey's. Hey. How are you? Not good. What's going on? I was, I was just criticizing my story. It's called feedback. That's cruel. It's necessary. Sounds interesting. What's the problem with the story? The story is non-linear. And quite complicated. Imagine a choose-your-own-adventure storybook. But for adults. Sounds pretty common so far. Instead of telling you which page to turn to... Each decision you make will give you a score. That score will determine which page you should go to. Sounds more like a video game than a book. I know, it's not that original. But my target here is the, is the mainstream audience. Huh? With any help of my publisher, this kind of book may go mainstream. Just like that choose your own adventure show, Netstream. Is nothing new, but because of the marketing and the names involved, it reached the mainstream market. That sounds interesting and highly ambitious. At least it's simpler than my other idea, which is making a novel not in the form of a book, but in the form of story cards. What? <laughs> I know, right? As if she has all the time in the world. And that's before even considering the sensitive issue. 
of setting your story in a world where only humans exist. What did you say? There's a reason why it has to be that way. Just wait until it's finished, okay? All right, all right. That's what I said, though. I won't have the time. Getting a normal pitch approved is already a steep climb. Let's not make the mountain even higher. Fair enough. What's the story all about, by the way? You'll have to wait for it. Don't want to spoil the fun. If you say so. Anyways, I haven't ordered anything. What would you like to drink tonight? A ginger latte, if you know how to make it. Coffee, milk, ginger. That would be my guess, is that would be coffee, milk, ginger. A ginger latte. Hmm. Trash it. Okay, so what makes the what makes this a latte? Check that it's double milk. A ginger latte. Does it need to be coffee ginger milk? Because the milk goes on top. Yes, okay, it's because you float the milk on the top. Okay. You don't think so. Damn, this is good. With this kind of drink making skills, well, this place isn't any bigger. What we have here now is more than enough for me. Whatever floats your boat, I guess. By the way, how are you doing, Bailey's? Still busy with your last client? Oh, I'm done with her. Done? As in you're dropping the project? Hey, I'm not crazy. I still need the money. Done as in I finished the job. Spent the last few days making sure it's even done before the deadline. Did she like it? Oh, she loved it. She had some complaints, of course, but I convinced her. By using some design terms she doesn't understand. So you finish your job by bullshitting her. The finest bullshit, lady. That's one survival skill every Philly Lancer must have. You work on anything right now? No. Taking a break from work. I need to work on a few personal matters. Oh. Like you and Lily? Something like that. By the way, I'm curious. How did you guys meet? If you don't mind me asking. I don't mind. It's just that I was young and stupid, you know. Oh, come on. Who hasn't been there? You're right. So, I was a bit of a player back in college. Ooh, spicy. And I was going after my then best friend's girlfriend's friend. Wait, what? Okay, I'll say it slowly. I used to have a best friend. He was an incubus. Okay, let's call him Cognac. Cognac has a girlfriend. He digs. Thanks, I appreciate that. Still following. And that girl has a friend. The friend is the one I'm after. Oh, okay. Got it. I was the one. I was. She was one of the hottest girls there. But everyone knew she wasn't the type of girl you'd want to date. Why? It's... I don't want to get into details. But this succubus was super hot. And all the guys wanted to sleep with her. She was a player, too. Huh? That didn't sound like Lua at all. Because it wasn't Lua. Genius. Huh. Lua was my friend's girl. 
Holy moly. This is getting spicier. The other girl's name was. Let's just call her Rose. Continue. I knew Lua thanks to her relationship with Cognac. That's a fake name you made up, right? Yes. Now will you let me continue without interruptions? Okay, okay. So I asked Lua a lot of things about Rose. She knew what I was after. It annoyed her so much, but I kept on bothering her. I mean, I was... I was a pretty active guy back then. So Lua came over to visit us at one point. I lived with Cognac back in college. I'd been out and got back just as Lua arrived. Total coincidence. We went into our place together and witnessed something surprising. But Cognac was sleeping with Rose. Holy mother of moly. I saw the look on Lua's face. The disbelief, anger, sadness. Without even talking about it, I punched Cognac in the face. You what? I got into a fight with him. Oh, I haven't told you. Cognac was a Brazilian jiu-jitsu tutor for kids. He's pretty good. Yeah, I landed that one punch. He beat me to a pulp. Easily. Lua begged me to stop fighting on her behalf. More like she begged Cognac. Hey, I wasn't kidding. I lost, but I don't give up so easily. I was beaten pretty badly. So Lua took care of my injuries. We grew closer after that. And I don't even remember the exact date. But suddenly, their friendship turned into a relationship. It's one hell of a story, I know. Have you seen her by any chance? Yeah. Lua came by a few days ago. How was she doing? She hasn't returned any of my calls or texts. Well, she's healthy, that's for sure. She got into an argument, though. With whom? It was this male model. Oh, now he's back in. Now that Hyde's being mentioned, he's back into the conversation. A model. I didn't think she was that type of girl. To go out with a model. Oh, they weren't together. What were they arguing about? Well... We were talking about your relationship. Lua told us about the reason behind the fight. About your family stuff. And then this guy, Hyde, joined the discussion. He didn't understand why Lua would insist on getting family approval. Considering, you know, you're willing to leave your own family. You would do that for her? Yes, I would. I'm sick and tired of my family. Why would you say that? You, ju you just sit there and sip sip your sip your stuff there Gala let me tell you about my family or I should say most elven families they all think they're so high and mighty if you're born an elf there are certain unwritten rules you must follow reputation and appearance are everything you must never ever make our family look bad you can only befriend certain people. You must dress a certain way. You can only have certain jobs. Jobs that are deemed worthy and successful. Like being a doctor, a lawyer, a CEO. You know. Ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted to be an artist. I love drawing and creating art. However, becoming an artist is not something the elves would deem suitable. Unless you become the next Da Vinci. So when I switched from a business major to an art major, my parents went crazy, screamed like they were on fire, told me that I'd never be rich or successful. All that because he chose an art degree. You want to know the worst part? They blamed Lua. What do you mean? They blamed her for my decision to pursue my passion for art. Yelled at her. Yelled about how her kind is ruining the country. Accusing their religion of worshipping the Dark Lord. Accusing her of putting a spell on me and cursing the family. Whoa. I mean, come on. This is 21st century. That's not cool. I don't want to sound judgmental. 
But your family is racist. Tell me about it. Lou is the only person that can make me feel alive. All right, we're going to pause just for a second. Lou is the only person that can make me feel alive. She showed me how I can be free and pursue my dreams. I don't understand why Lua is so obsessed with the idea of reconciliation with my family. I don't get it. I have no problem leaving my family, you know. I would happily leave them for the both of us. What about her? What about her and her family? You may be happy to leave your family. However, it may not be the same for her. Now, you... Go, do you have something to say? Perhaps you could give us a different perspective. Sorry, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. We couldn't help but overhear your story. I assume that the person you're talking about is not an elf, correct? Yes, she is a sub succubus. I see. I'm a werewolf. Werewolves, the wolf pack is the most important thing. We'll put family before any other. We often have our own problems within the pack. But we don't abandon our family for anything. Perhaps that's also f true for her and her family. Besides, if you leave your family for her, wouldn't that make your parents believe that all those bad stereotypes about succubi are true? I never thought of it that way before. Whether you like it or not, your actions will have an impact on her as well. And if you leave your family for her, that would put her in a difficult spot. She might feel responsible for your actions. There's nothing to feel bad about. I'm leaving my messy family to create a better one with her. It's easy for you to say that now, but you don't know what the future holds. One day, circumstances might change. One day, you might regret your decisions. One day, you might use the I left my family for you card. We love each other. We'll be with her. Whatever the circumstances may be, you know. Love is like a flame. It might burn fiercely at first, but over time it will die down if you don't maintain it. Maintaining it won't be easy. It will be hard work. Because life, life is full of storms. And marriage, it will not survive on love alone. Whoa. That's deep. Well, we have each other and that's enough for us. Tell me. You have health insurance? I, I'm an elf. Why would I need health insurance? You'll need some. What for? Immortality is an elven privilege. But you'll lose it if your family disowns you. I've seen people go bankrupt because they fell ill or got so seriously injured. Emptied their entire life savings for an $8 pill because in this country they charge two. $20,000 for it. If you decide to have children, they won't have the same privileges as you. There's a high probability that they'll be bullied for being a half-breed. <coughs> there are... <coughs> <coughs> Over here dying. It shouldn't be taken lightly. Ah, there we go. Think about it. Anyways, I've got to go. Apologies. No, thank you for your insight. I've got to go, too. Want to take it out together? Sure. Thanks for the drink, Fasta. And Freya. Bye. Bye now. You made me lose two customers in a minute. Hey, that wasn't on me. They were leaving anyway. You going to write that in your book? It's a secret. If your book is based off this coffee shop, 
How can you present a story if there is no world with only humans around it? Not sure. Perhaps a hot drink will give you some inspiration. Sounds like a great idea. Cough syrup. Looks like, if I remember right, it's like matcha, matcha, honey, lemon. So green tea, honey, lemon. I don't know, matcha is not actually green tea, but... Ooh, vows to stop major hospitals selling furry, furry, fury, sedative illegally. Because of reasons. Coachella 2020. Ten reasons why you should go. Sports tournament in space might be only a few decades away. It's the boys. They really never changed. I know. But it was surprisingly nice catching up with people from back then. Thank you for forcing me to do it. Don't mention it. I like to order again. The usual. Back to the experiment. Yes. The last one was the remedy. No harm in checking other combinations. All right. Tea, milk, ginger. Tea, milk, ginger. Try this. Thank you. Just what I needed. What about you, Mr. Hyde? Would you like to order anything else? I'm good for now. Couldn't help it over. Sounds like you two go way back. We do, I guess. He was my bodyguard. Oh. Didn't you meet here? Shall we turn in a moment? Alright, we're back. Yeah, when this was a bar. What happened exactly? He was getting his ass kicked by a couple of dwarves. Ugh, those two bastards. It wasn't a pretty sight, so I intervened. Aren't vampires supposed to be, you know, tough? Just because I'm a vampire doesn't mean I know Kung Fu. Sorry, I had a couple of drinks. I could have taken them both if I was sober. A couple, you really? You were trashed, Hyde. You told them I was your bodyguard. Wait, were you not his bodyguard? Not at the time. We didn't even know each other. Because of the whole fiasco, we both got kicked out. And then, this wasted vampire stuck to me. Like, well, you know, to a blanket. 
obviously he was too drunk to drive. So I hailed a cab. Turns out he was also too drunk to tell the driver where he lived. And I was stuck with him until morning. Thanks for not leaving me on the street, Gala. That's what bros do. Those doors could have killed me. Who were they? I'm not going to confirm or deny anything, but they possibly may have had ties to the Mafia. I might have lost some of their money on the stock market. A lot of their money. They wanted me to launder their dirty money. So I decided to screw them over instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I overheard what they were talking about before the fight started. I knew Hyde was innocent, and that's why I helped him. He might be an annoying asshole, but he's not a thief. What a stroke of luck, the universe sending me a guardian angel at my time of need. So the next morning I offered him a job as my bodyguard for real. For all the trouble you caused me the, the night before. Hey, I took you to breakfast. Don't tell me that counted for nothing. I have to say, it wasn't my proudest moment. I was broke. Breakfast was off was an offer I couldn't refuse. It was the late sixties, mind you. It wasn't easy finding a job, especially for people like me. Werewolves. War veterans. Ah, I see. How'd you go from working as a bodyguard to working at the working in the hospital gala? Well, when he was working with me, I noticed. I'd. I prefer if we skip this part. I'm sorry, but I want to go into any details about it. It's all right. Forgive me for asking. I don't mind telling you the quick and dirty version. Long story short, he helped me with something. Let's just say something from my past. Thanks to that help, I found a new purpose in life. Helping other people live. Of course, it's not easy for a veteran werewolf to become a nurse or doctor. That's why I chose hospital admin instead. So you could say I owe this guy my life. Thanks to his stubborn persistence in helping me when I needed it. Thank you for sharing your story with me. Didn't I expect such a tale from you. I know. Anyway, of course, I'd like to order something you now. What would you like? You make a tea-based drink that's warm and cool at the same time. All right, so tea. So tea, not green tea. Tea. Oh, wait a second. T. Make it extra cool. Make it extra warm. Tea, mint, and ginger. I'm curious what this makes. Tea, tea ginger mint. Let's try that. Trash it. Tea ginger mint. It's way warmer than it is cool. Trash it. Okay. T is the base. Hmm. 
That exponentially increases that. That increases that. We're going to go with, so the mint is 100% needed. Mint. Cinnamon will do the best. That's as good as I'm going to get it. Perfect. Yeah, I haven't seen her today. Speak of the devil. Oh, good people. And one vampire. <laughs> good to see you too. Right, uh, by the way, we were just talking about you. Oh, really? What about me? I was just surprised you weren't here. Is that how you pick up girls young enough to be your granddaughter? That won't work on me. I have no interest in flirting with you. <coughs> I've got high standards, you know. You? You look tired for you. Hard day at work? How could you tell? Call it werewolf senses. And the fact that you work at a hospital... Right. I showed Frost in my draft and I actually got some good feedback. That's good to hear. Glad I could help. So I spent the whole day rewriting stuff. And also did some stories for the paper. Overall, it was a good day. That's good to hear. But please, don't forget to take a break. It's easy to get carried away by work when you're on a roll. Will do, sir. Speaking of hospitals... How's your hospital adminning life going? Not even a word, Freya. Actually, I'm not even sure what you even do there. Hmm. Pretty boring to talk about. But mostly, I handle operational stuff happening in the hospital. I just realized my music is still going. There we go. Things like how much a specialist costs and how much it affects our income. I also deal with patients and their families. If they require intensive care, such as operations, I go through what we do and how much it would cost them. Kind of the biz dev for people's lives, then. You could say that. Damn, that sounds complicated and hard. That's why I'm seated for my job someone else would get very emotionally attached to patients would find this job very tough whereas heartless people like my friend here only see it from a business perspective good point why do people rarely talk about your kind of job i guess people don't really notice we exist or think about the necessity of it exactly it's an interesting job Yet no one talks about it. Maybe because most admins are just like me. We rarely talk about our about work outside the hospital. Why? For me, I just don't find any reason to. It's the patient's personal lives anyways. Much professionalism and loyalty. Though such. You should keep the uh, keep hold of that mindset, especially in front of this lady here. You he needs to be a bit less loyal, though. Hide. You've been doing this job for a while, right? Almost 50 years now. Whoa, I didn't know that. Wait. 50 years in the same position? Uh-huh. Holy. I asked for a promotion, man. They keep offering me new positions. Mostly managerial. Take it. Not interested. Why? 
It's not something I want. Besides, as I told you before, I fit perfectly in this position. But the salary must be better if you take the promotion, right? Of course. But what I get at the moment is more than enough for me right now. And I still get raises while I do doing this job. Can't really figure out. It's Gala for you. Anyway, my shift starts soon. It was nice catching up with both of you. Are you going to stay, Hyde? Yeah, I'm still enjoying the vibes here. I'll see you in a few weeks, I guess. Yep. Safe trip. See you around, Frosto. And you, Freya. See you. Take care on your way. You know, it's kind of hard to believe someone like Gala would be your best friend. We were just talking about that before you arrived. Oh, really? Man, I missed an interesting story. So how did you guys meet? Seriously, I have to retell the story? Yes, come on. You're not going anywhere, right? Huh. All right, then. We met in this place back when it was a bar. Whoa, I never knew Gala used to be in the army. I mean, he's got the build to be on the front line. Still, though. Why did he make the jump from, how would I say this, very physical job to medic? I'm not comfortable talking about it right now. But you know why, right? Are you trying to squeeze the story from me? Obviously. He doesn't want to talk about it. That's him, not you. Seriously, Freya? Come on. I won't get into details, but... Going to war, it messes with your head. You see why Gala doesn't want to talk about it, huh? I don't get it. It must be difficult, especially back then. The only thing he was confident in was his strength. So, he only did work that relied on his muscle. I wouldn't help him get over his trauma, though, right? Of course not. But it was the only thing he could do. Or at least... It's the only thing he thought he could do. But you hired him for his muscle. Hey, I didn't know all that at the time. Besides, he's good at being a bodyguard. And we weren't that close yet. So, no personal feelings. I needed his strength, but then I got to be interested in him. I think he's a cool person, that's all. After he months, I noticed his problem. I suggest you talk about it with someone, seek help, which you refuse. But I kind of pushed them into it. How? It's complicated. Eventually, he did go get professional help, of course. I have no idea what happened in his therapy sessions, but in the end, he found a new purpose in his life. He quit working for me, and not so long after that, he started working at the hospital. He's been working. Oh, it's you. Oh boy. Good evening. Nice to see you again. We are also glad to see you, Barista. By the way, I didn't catch your name the last time you visited. Do you have a name? Name? We sure have. On Earth, please call us Neil. Neil. Yes. Like Neil Armstrong? Oh, of course not. Due to the nature of our communication, we do not really need trivial things like names to interact. But from what we learned here, it seems like the name Neil has a lot of associations with Earthlings. Yep, okay. An intergalactic exploration. Ah, I get what you mean. I believe we did not meet last time we were here. I saw you from afar when you left the coffee shop a few days ago. So, hello, my name is Freya. You could say I'm a regular here. And you, sir? Hide. You come here often? For someone who doesn't live in Seattle? Yeah. Oh, you're not from around here. Neither are we. Where do you come from? Far away. By far away, do you mean a few thousand miles or more? More. Much more. 
more to the point that your strange calculation system means nothing. That sounds far away indeed. What are you doing here in Seattle? And do all your kind just like this? Oh, this? We chose this appearance based on an image we saw when we first arrived. Image? Ah, the Armory Gen Jeremy Andrew album cover. No wonder you look familiar. As for what we are doing, this place is really the perfect spot to practice our communication skills with Earthlings. But before that, please let us order something from the barista. What would you like to drink tonight? The usual? Is that how you say it? Yes. So, anything? Yes. You won't be able to taste the difference anyways. You really can't taste anything? Yes. What if I can brew a drink that can make you feel something? Interesting premise. But we doubt you'll be able to do that. Challenge accepted. Please surprise us. Make us feel something. Didn't I just get something that can make... Warm booster make you feel something. Make you feel something. Hmm. Okay. Milk. Honey mix. I believe is what it said. Mm-hmm. That actually looks pretty cool. Let's see. I hope I got this right. Thank you. What the? Interesting. Or you ask. Yes, that's how they drink. This. The little finger pokes, I forgot about it. What is this? We have never been able to taste anything in our life. But this. This. This is a breakthrough. We have to report immediately. Done. Thank you so much from all of our kind. You are an interesting person. Thank you. That was a compliment. Yes. Normally, yes. But you can't be too sure with me. <laughs> that definitely was the highest form of compliment. What are you, Neil? Us? We are travelers. Doing our job in the space you call Milky Way. What kind of job? We are tasked with the mission to spread our seats. You really are here to find a date? All the way from a galaxy far, far away. Wow. It turns out pervs exist everywhere in the universe. Feeling attacked, old man? Not really. You have a valid point. We do not understand. But we are glad if we can make you laugh. Oh, the pleasure is mine. I may ask, why do you have to breed with us? Hmm, we are sorry, but that is classified information. Oh man. But we believe it is right, all right to share with you tonight. Thanks to this eye opening drink from the barista. Yeah, we get secrets. I owe you the story. So, why is it? Everyone, including us and you, and everyone else, is tasked to keep the balance of the universe. Sometimes it is hard for some civilizations to maintain balance by themselves. Because unknown threats that are beyond each civilization's power can appear. And that is where we come in. So don't see the rapid relation between that and impregnating us. You're quite dense, aren't you? Hey! They came here to give seeds. So a half rate of your kind can be born on Earth. That is correct. And half breed will be half Earthling, half whatever you are. Assuming that you have some powers that we can't comprehend, you are trying to make sure Earth will have its own protector. 
That is 100% correct. Holy shit. You're trying to give us a superhero. Yes, that is what your people will call the protector. But why go through all the hassle? Sounds like a lot of work. Why not just explain this to someone? I'm sure the law wouldn't, wouldn't mind giving birth to a superhero. Sadly, it's not that simple. The future protector has to be someone that loves this planet more than anything. They have to be born out of love. Which we have learned is a very complicated feeling on Earth. We have it easier back home due to the nature of our communication. We understand everyone deeply by default. So everyone on our planet loves each other from the moment they're born. That sounds beautiful. And creepy. Why? Sounds like your planet is a giant spherical orgy. That was a badly chosen word. But it is roughly similar to the truth. <laughs> Not how I would word it, but it's correct. Oh my. If what you say is true, shouldn't we help them get laid? Hello? Guidance is all we need. Otherwise, we might be responsible for the birth of a super evil person instead. Well, how's the mission going so far? We cannot say it's going well. I'm not surprised. With how quirky and unique you are, not many women can handle that. Could you handle them, though? Me? I don't know. What do you think? You're a pretty adventurous girl. I wouldn't be surprised if you decided to go on a date. Or maybe go further. If it got you a good story. Oh, you're not offended by that? Not in the slightest. You're wrong, though. I'd go on a date with them. But I don't like to sleep around. Really? To be honest, I didn't expect that. Yeah, I get that a lot. People often mistake me for someone who gets around a lot. Excuse me, miss. From what we gather, does it mean that you're willing to breed with us in exchange for our stories? Wow, no wonder your mission isn't going well. I don't mind going out with you for a drink or dinner in exchange for stories, but only but only sleep with someone I'm serious about. But our mission is serious. It's not that. You either have to be my boyfriend or husband if you want to sleep with me. We have heard of those terms before. Check them once again. This is... This is very strange. According to what we found, many Earthlings mate with one person exclusively for their entire lives. Yes, that's called commitment. Such a strange concept. Then why, with such rules, do you still face overpopulation problems? Hmm. Now that you mention it, we don't have enough control of ourselves. And those in charge also don't have enough control of us. Not to mention some races live for a very, very long time. So even though there are rules about having kids, and they can be strictly enforced, a lot of people still break them. No Earthlings boast about the concept of free will, but we thought your kind also loved the concept of restraint in taking care of the planet. At least, that's what we gathered from your information network. Theoretically, that should be the case. But Earthlings are stupid. That's the easiest way to put it. We learned so much today. But we have another question for Miss Freya. Ask away. How can we become your husband? <laughs> First of all, I would suggest going step by step. Most of this time, you start off by dating. Boyfriends or girlfriends, you know. Before you talk about marriage. Oh, okay. So, how can I become your boyfriend? You should start by asking her whether she's actually single. Understood. So, Miss Rhea, are you single? Yes, I am single. Would you like to be our girlfriend? Now, the path to st starting to date varies between people. But, usually it takes some time before you want to commit yourself to someone. Wow. The breeding process in Earth 
surely extremely complicated. It can be easier if you're a smooth talker. Smooth talker. Someone good at communicating with others. That would be really challenging for us. Even after all that, making kids is still in, an, in a totally different league. Most women prefer it with their male partners wear condoms. And it's something you wear to prevent pregnancy. How would you do the mating ritual if you do not want to have offspring? Pleasure. All this information is too much to process in one evening. So we talked about using condom. How do your kind have sex? Like, seeing how you drink. A condom might be something you can't use at all. Hmm. That's true. How do you do it? We are pretty flexible with that. We cannot tell you the details. Unless we agree to do the mating ritual. I don't want to imagine how it's done. Oh, you do not need to worry. We will not hurt anyone physically or mentally. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Especially the mental part. We did our research and we tried it on the testing subject we made. It was proven. Mental capacity for Earthlings is far more complicated than anything else on Earth, sir. Oh, he did not know that. Being born on Earth sounds very difficult. It is. I have to agree with that. Anyway, thank you so much for the information you have given us tonight. It means a lot for our mission. I like Neil. I like Neil. A lot. We have to report our findings to the base. How you proceed with your mission with this newfound information? We are not sure yet. But it is yet to be discussed, after all. It was really nice talking with all of you. You're welcome. We are off now. Bye. Take care on your way, sir. That was really something. Indeed. You said the first time you came here was for a date, right? Yeah, but their date never came. Then they mistook Miss Myrtle for their date. The game developer. Wow, I dread to think how that went. It was pretty awkward. But you can't be angry at such my naivete. I guess so. By the way, has the young woman been back since I spoke with her last time? I mean Miss Lua? Yeah, her. Oh, showing some sh concern now, are you? I'm just curious. No, I haven't seen her since then. But her boyfriend did come in a few days ago. And Freya was being pretty nosy to the point that Mr. Gala joined the discussion. My, my. You really have a knack for starting trouble. Sadly, I have to agree with that. It's not easy to make Gala join a random conversation. Unless it really piques his interest. Or it annoys him. I don't know how to react to that. Yeah, he might have been annoyed at it. Well, I need to catch a flight to Seoul tomorrow. I'm off for the day. Oh, you're leaving Seattle so soon? Only for a week or so. I'll be back here sooner than you know. Oh, well. It'll be a peaceful week then. Yeah. Anyway, I need to get going as well. Thank you for letting me stay without ordering anything. Hmm. I didn't even notice that. Don't really care about business. She didn't order anything, but she did attract people to the coffee shop. <laughs> That's one way to put it. Anyway, for him. Do you want to share a cab? Thanks, but I'm riding my bike. All right, then. See you around. Take care on your way, folks. That looks like cinnamon, ginger, if I was to guess, milk. Shadows that will help you try to hide a bitter heart. Maybe tea. Might actually be tea. Tea, cinnamon, and ginger.
Protests arise over government treatment of Atlantic immigrants. Dwarven made cars face challenge against an unexpected competitor. The Mother Earth organization fights to save more forests. Who's first? Oh, someone new. Good evening, sir. Hello. I'm from the Federal Immigration Regulation and Enforcement Division. Or FIRE for short. How may I help you? I've heard reports of alien sightings in this area. We take the issue of illegal interstellar immigration seriously. Have you seen any creatures that would be considered alien in nature? Hmm. I don't think so. But what'd you be looking for? What's the alien look like? We're not 100% sure. But according to some eyewitnesses, wearing a spacesuit or something similar. That's er, a pretty eye catching outfit. You'd think an illegal alien would try to blend in better, right? To avoid attention, you know. It's a very good point. In fact, there might be a solid possibility that we have been running around after false testimonies. Yay, look at you. Look at us. They are superior creatures, after all. Thank you for the help. If you see any suspicious activities, please contact us through our website. We'll do, sir. You want to drink anything before leaving? We're good. Take care on your way. All right. My self summary veteran now working in a hospital. Favorite things anything warm and made with ginger, metal maiden, full metal jarhead. Trying to heal myself by helping other people. Nice. Freelance designer. Favorite things punk. Been listening to Pumpkin Spice since I was a wee lad. Escaping bloodlines, experiencing life one color at a time. One day I will have my own solo exp exhibition. Yeah, that thing. Um, the fact that I've been blood sober for 10 years now. There you go. Currently a model, past stock trader, entrepreneur, and venture capitalist. Anybody? Oh, Neil. He just made a profile. <laughs> That's nice. Oh, it's you two. Good evening, Frosta. Yo. Hello, Miss Aqua, Miss Myrtle. Have you both been somewhere together? We plan to meet here. Just a coincidence we arrived at the same time. Would you like to order anything? Do you want to order first? Now you go first. Okay. I have a cup of green tea with a lot of mint. Green tea. Double up that mint. Marrakech. Huh. Interesting. Your drink's ready. Ooh, looks really fresh. I call this Marrakech, inspired by its origin. Marrakech in Morocco? I heard the people there really love tea. Let's give this a try then. Oh my. It's warm, but very refreshing. No render Morocco is often associated with tea. How about you, Miss Myrtle? You like to order anything right away? I'll have a tetar. Oh boy, I don't know what that one is. Oh. Cool. I have no idea what that is. I have no problems looking this stuff up, though.
to Tariq. Come on. TT and milk. Okay. Huzzah! We did it. Here's your te Tarek. Huh? Did anything wrong? No. Better than I thought it would be, actually. The taste is really authentic. Just like the te Tarek you get in Southeast Asia. Thank you for the compliment. Where'd you learn to make it? I traveled around Southeast Asia a few years ago. So you learned about it in Malaysia? Yes. And from videos on the internet. So, um, how are things going in the office? As usual. Tiring. But thanks to you and your team, we've made some good progress with a problem we've been stuck on for a while. I'm glad I could be of help. They're adorable. It's not every day our research can have an impact as direct as this. Only a few weeks after publication, no less. The thing is, even with your help, we still need to do the ridiculous amount of overtime to make sure the game will be available for the holiday season. Oh. I want to say please don't forget to rest, but I'm sure it won't be that easy for you and the team. As if those executives care about us. Overtime is not mandatory, they'll say. Please see your family, get some rest. But we all know that opt optional overtime is a passive-aggressive move. We'll stay longer in the office anyway. Because if you go home earlier than the others, you'll feel bad for them. You'll feel guilty. I understand that so much. I hate to admit it, but yeah, it's guilt. I wish I could help you, or at least say something to boost your morale. Sadly, I'm not the right person to give you advice about that. For guilt is something that also bothers me a lot. Even for things I shouldn't feel guilty about. But you know what makes it worse. I know the state of the industry. But it still saddens me to realize that my favorite series was born out of such sacrifice. I'm sorry I made them ruined the mood for everyone. Don't worry about it. It's not that bad off, you know. At least the company gives us decent compensation. Healthcare, bonuses, so on. We're already used to this. So don't you worry about me, okay? Getting used to unhealthy working conditions shouldn't be a norm. Hey, cheer up. Remember... Your research helped us out a lot. Thanks to you, the rest of the development is going to be much easier. How's your game doing, by the way? Actually, I have some good news about it. What is it? The game got approved to be showcased at Max West this year. That's really good news. Congrats. Thank you. So, what's the problem then? I haven't confirmed my attendance to the organizer. Why? Confirm it. Fast. Before they give your spot to another indie. I, I'm just not sure about it. What's stopping you? Hi, Thorn. How's it going? Welcome in. What's stopping you? Cost? The booth is free for indies. That's good. Then the events even in Seattle. You don't need to spend anything on travel or accommodation. It's a golden ticket, but I'm not that confident. You passed the selection process, right? That should be enough validation to reassure you of the game's quality. If I'm not mistaken, the judges are usually prolific people in the industry. And also senior journalists. I know. But I've told you about my game, right? It's pretty non-traditional and thousands of people will be visiting maps expecting full metal conflict and other bigger games every game has its own market you know 
and you'll be the indie area. People know what to expect there. Gamers aren't stupid. What if some haters visit the booth? What if they don't like my game and say bad things about it? Or about me? That's not going to happen. It's an expo, not the internet. People are way nicer in real life. <sighs> Even after all that, I s I'll still be there by myself for the whole event. Hmm. There's one problem, you know? Meeting that many people is already scary enough. Doing it for four days straight? Showing my baby to the public? Can't imagine the horror. You know what? Hmm? So far, my schedule is pretty empty around then. If things stay this way until max, I'll come with you. <laughs> she is over the moon. Oh. So you're talking about whether or not he should disown his family. So... Gala brings up really good points that we can't really think about, like, as human, like, as fleshy, pe fleshy humans on, on the other side of the screen. Like, how immortality works for elves, um, how half-breeds work. Like, yeah, you can draw, like, lines of, like, racism and stuff as far as, like, half-breed like the half-breed ideas but the gala brings up very good points of what ifs i would say that my gut instinct is i'm on bailey's side because if your family is not willing to even change a little bit for you, like change their thought process even a little bit for you, then they don't really care about you then. So I would say if this was a normal human conflict where all the cards are on the table like it would normally be in a human conflict of just like somebody from West Side Story Romeo Juliet type deal um then I would say that the family that is not willing to look past everything and support you with what you want to do is the family that you should leave. Will it suck? Yes. It will absolutely suck. But your family should support you. Your family should give you good counsel. If you are going to do something dumb, your family should give you good counsel and give you their opinions, but they should still support you. Like, a good example would be a blue collar dad being, being like, I don't really, uh, I don't really get why you're going into like getting an art degree, but. I support you. The blue collar worker dad does blue collar work. Doesn't really understand like what the drive might be to do an art degree or fully understand like the skills that their child has as far as art goes and the work that they could do. But he, he tells them like, he'll, he'll tell them like, Hey, that industry is a bit hard to get into but I'll support you. Like that is, that is what your family should do.
Oh, we're at an ad, so I'll wait for the ad to finish up and we'll hop back into it. All right, now that the ad is done, um, Lewis, to play Devil's Advocate, Lewis side is interesting. She has the supportive family and the support structure. So the idea of abandoning her family is alien. Because why would she abandon family that is so supportive of her? Why would she cut them off? Ever, which then projects out from her to her relationships. I could never see myself leaving my family, so why can you so easily see yourself leaving your family? That's how I see uh, Lua's side of it. So she's not inherently wrong. It's just that her... Her experiences puts on a tinted puts on tinted glasses that affect how she sees other relationships. I would say. No, you don't have to do that. Even if you're free then. You shouldn't waste your time on me. Relax or something. Nah, it's no bother. I'll be going to the event anyway. Might as well come with an exhibitor badge. What about your company's booth? Don't worry about it. There are hundreds of us. I can just ask my lead to skip this year. But, 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 I'm coming with you, whether you like it or not. Oh, okay, good. Now, what are you going to show me? Show the game on. I'll have a laptop and a smartphone. Is the expo build ready? Expo build? I'm not planning to showcase the full version, right? Um, that's the plan. Don't. I can give you the guidelines on what to have for the expo build. You have... Do you have the game with you now? It's on my phone. I can send you the build now if you want. Do so. Okay. Got it. Now, let's see. Is she finally here? Oh, it's Rachel. At least I think that's Rachel. Yeah, it is. Okay. Hello, Miss Rachel. Hi, Frosta. Hmm. What's wrong? Hmm? Huh? Nothing. Just been practicing all day and I'm pretty tired. Are you having a concert soon? Don't tell anyone yet. It'll be announced tomorrow. But I'm going to perform at Coachella this next week. You're still adding new performance? Yeah. You might say that those announced this late are... Backups. Oh. When she leaves... If it's a spoiler thing, no. Because this is my first time playing through it. It's just still the biggest festival in the country. Yes, I'm excited for it. I think I should celebrate with a special drink, something sweet. What do you want to order? Sweet hot chocolate. What would that be? Double chocolate with honey or... Oh, wait, no, it'd be chocolate, milk, and honey. Chocolate, milk, honey. One second. Oh, yeah.
Okay. So I'm not I'm not too far off. It's just that it's Okay, so I wasn't too far off. It's chocolate honey milk. But it's supposed to be hot. What day is this day? September 30th. Oh, okay. Nice. September 30th. Okay, there we go. So was that? So chocolate, honey, then milk. It's she says sweet hot chocolate. So when the warm is the warm bar doesn't. Yeah. My brain just says this doesn't make sense. It's supposed to be warm because it says hot. <laughs> Need your drink. Oh, it looks very pretty. It's warm and sweet. I love it. Okay, so I'm assuming the warm... It's more warm because of the effect of spice. If I, like, thinking about it now, like, with how it works, mint makes it cooler because mint has that type of effect. Whereas, like, cinnamon has a spice effect making it spicier. Please don't hesitate to call me if you need anything else. Thanks. Other than the instruction on the loading screen, try putting a time limit for how long they can play. Why? Wouldn't that break their immersion? Probably, but in case there's a good re reaction to it, you might have people lining up to play your game. Don't want them to take too long. That makes sense. If you don't want to put them on a time limit, try ending the demo with a cliffhanger. That should get people's attention. Noted. Is Freya here yet? Because... Oh, God. What are you doing here? Oh, God. After what you did at the studio this evening, I was worried I couldn't find you anywhere around the studio, so I thought you would, you'd be here. But we can not just limit ourselves to this place. Now you're causing a ruckus. We're sorry, Frosta. We didn't mean to cause any problems. I'm not sure. I like Neil. Like, just how weird Neil is. But I'd say that Gala. I like Gala a lot. You are sorry. I don't have anything to be sorry for. Well, anyway, I better order something. What are you having? What would you recommend? How my Spanish Sahara? What is it? Hot chocolate with milk and ginger. Chocolate with milk and ginger. Your drink is ready, sir. My, my. This is amazing. Glad you like it. Dad. Yes. Please, just go home after you finish your drink. Not until you leave that good-for-nothing pervert. I need him. He's going to help me become more successful. I know, Morris. He is not a good person. The industry has changed, Dad. It's not like 20 years ago. Besides, since you left... He's been growing his brand, making his name. 
managing a lot of stars so they become superstars. I still have my informants in the industry. He hasn't changed much. Even if he has, it wasn't for the better. You're just being paranoid. First, you were afraid of how my fans would treat me. Now you're afraid of the industry too? What's next? You'll lock me in the house because you're afraid of the air I'm breathing? You're just too young to understand. Then make me understand. Because this is definitely not helping. There are better ways. More Lester, what an unfortunate name. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Didn't you learn anything from mom? You were together for almost 15 years, and you but you learned nothing. Not even how to talk to your own daughter. Rachel, I... I'm sorry. I'm trying, okay? Try harder. Because right now, you're not helping anyone. Not me, not you, no one. I know. But give me a chance. You know what? It will take time for me to learn. But I am learning. Or, you know, I could return to the industry. I could try to be your manager. Dad, are you out of your mind? You've been out of touch for so long. I told you, I have informants there. I'm not that out of touch. Of course, there are things I need to figure out, but we... It doesn't work that way, Dad. You know that. Going from a girl band to a solo career won't be easy. But if I take things slow, I'll lose all my momentum. If you don't want me to be your manager, can you at least choose someone better than Morris? I don't think so. Mr. Lester is at the height of his career right now. He's my best chance right now. Don't be too paranoid, okay? I've made my decision now. Please go home. Relax. Don't ever come to my come to the studio again. I'm going back there. I need to practice for the festival. It's only a few days away. It's a big chance to boost my presence as a solo artist. When are you going to be home? I don't know. I'll be staying at the hotel the label provided. But that's... See you, Dad. Wait, Rachel. Oof. I, I, I see where he's coming from, being a protective dad. But... He's overreaching a bit. He's definitely overreaching and not communicating in a very in a healthy way with Rachel. Are we gonna go back to the other two? Are they still talking or were they watching all that? Sorry about what just happened. You don't have to apologize. Yeah, we were busy minding our own business anyway. But you didn't hear the argument, Myrtle? Of course I heard them. I chose to ignore most of it. It's none of my business, is it? That's amazing. What's so amazing about that? I don't think I can do that. Dividing and focusing my attention so completely. Especially when there's an argument like that. Are you saying you weren't listening to my advice? And you were focusing on them instead? Eh... <laughs> No, I was listening. I made notes. See, you didn't even realize. But you are capable of focusing your attention. Now that you mention it, it happens naturally, I guess. Being born into a big family is useful after all. Yeah, sometimes we don't even realize what we're capable of doing. By the way, you want to head back now? Yeah, it's pretty late. Yo, Frosto, we're leaving. Hope you have a good time. Thank you for the drinks as usual. Please take care on your way home. <laughs> yes, definitely. I guess that's all for two. Oh, you're back, Mr. Hendry. Are you all right, sir? Sir? Oh, yes, yes. Please don't worry about me. Did you manage to catch up with Miss Rachel? No. I lost her. Sorry to hear that. 
but I'm sure she's all right. I hope you're right. By the way, pardon me for asking, yes? Throughout your arguments with, with Rachel, something kept bugging me. What's that? Why did you leave the music industry? <laughs> now that's a trip down memory lane. You don't have to tell me if it makes you uncomfortable. No, it's fine. I left around 20 years ago, just as we were welcoming the beginning of the new millennium. It was a great time for girl bands, you know. They were huge in the 90s, and they were still enjoying the leftover sensation of the past decade. I met my life, my wife while working. She worked for a record label. That's how we met. I decided to get married and settle down. I wanted a peaceful life. You didn't find peace managing girl bands? Oh, gosh, no. The politics, the dark side of the industry, none of it's good. But what hit me the hardest was the fans. Toxic fans are the worst. The teenage girls especially, they were crazy about their idols. To the point where they started doing really unimaginable stuff. Like what? Spending all their money trying to copy the superstar lifestyle, abandoning their responsibilities, their families, and the men. They were even worse. They sexualized the girls in every way you could possibly imagine. Edited photos, stalking, outright sexual assault. It was before the internet, mind you. I mean, the internet existed, but it wasn't as mainstream as it is now. I wasn't even the target of the abuse, but it haunted me. It has everywhere. Don't talk to me about peace. I couldn't sleep back then. Not getting enough sleep is dangerous for cats. What do you do for a living now? So we got married, my wife and I opened a record store. It's not big, but we have a very specific audience. We're niche, but they love us for it. It's more than enough for our little family. You said you're still in touch with your friends in the music industry. They visit my place from time to time, and we all meet up at least once a year. Usually, it's at my place. Gosh, look at the time. I should go home, too. Are you going to be all right by yourself? Don't worry about me. I'm an old cat. We're stronger than most people think. See you later. I'm sorry for bringing our fight to your place. Don't worry about it. All right, then. Goodbye. He means well, but he's so bad at executing. The execution is what's was stopping him. A variation of the Japanese brew mixing the brown rice with ginger. Brown rice? So that's green tea for sure. With brown rice and ginger? Interesting. Thursday, October 1st. 2020. <laughs> that brings us to the end of the video hope you enjoyed it if you liked it hit that like button and if you want more hit the subscribe button and don't forget to hit that little bell so that it notifies you when i do upload and remember you are loved and you are enough have a good one